down here. Do you speed shop? 55 Chevrolet Nomad. Work on this again. So the last video, we patched up some floorboards and uh, guess what? This video, we're patching up some floorboards. This is gonna be uh, much different, much more exciting somehow. I haven't decided yet, but uh, the, the driver's side, if you watched the last video, we ended up kind of really doing a lot of patches and stuff. And a lot of people are asking why I didn't do a full floor pan and all that. Ultimately, this is probably more work in the floor pan section of it. Because if you put a one piece floor in, you just slide in and you kind of weld all the way around. It's much simpler, everything fits, it's good. However, typically to do that, you need a lift to take you know, the body off the frame, motor trans out, all that sort of stuff, front clip off. I didn't want to do any of that. So what I'm losing in easy floor install, I'm gaining in disassembly and reassembly, and this car just is so nice together, we're leaving it. Now, under all these floors, there are already a bunch of braces, some under there, some over there, and you gotta kinda make that all work. We're working with, I'm not gonna call it used junk, but stuff that somebody had purchased and uh, didn't use. So it's new, but new old stock, we'll call it. From China. Uh, this side, like I said, isn't quite as bad. Really, I mean, this is where this is kind of a nice car, so I kind of care about it. The front floor pan, I mean, we could probably, you know, well, it's a little soft there. We have one hole right there. We could probably just patch up just kind of one little section there. Uh, however, there's a brace crust there, which is no good. Shocker. Under the seat is not too bad, other than this little weird section for some reason. So we'll have to see what we have to do here. Um, there are a bunch of braces under here. Well, this looks like it's been filled with fiberglass, so it's rotten. I don't have the center pan, but this section here seems like it's pretty solid. This is just kind of flat steel, which we can bend over. I also have what's left over of the other pans. We could flip it and then the back here, I don't know how far we are going to go. Again, there is a brace that runs right here, which we have to repair. So we may end up cutting some out here, but this is again, all kind of mostly flat metal. And I do have this back pan, so I could put one in or half one or do something. This side should be a lot easier though. The rockers are in much better shape. Eh, better, <laughs> better shape, I guess, not much better. So we can get that all taken care of. We'll move some of this wiring away. But step one will involve uh, blazing out the front floor, just because that's uh, what we're going to do. I'll probably, I have the pan, I might as well use it. As you can see on that one, it joins right there. We don't have this pan, so we'll, we'll probably do the same. I'll cut it right around this edge, all the way up, right to the tow board, across the tunnel. Take that whole piece out, the whole brace out, and we can get that set into place. Pasture side is always much easier. There's no steering wheel to deal with. That thing is the bane of my existence. You can't take it out to call out and all that stuff or just suffer. There's no pedals. Again, welding up here. Much hassle. So that also, passenger side, typically not as bad because if a car's moving, there's usually always somebody in the driver's side. So their boots are wet, they have salt, sand, whatever it may be. I guess you California guys don't have that. What do you, you got like uh, green drink and uh, sunlight or something like that on your shoes? But for us rough and tumble up northern guys, junk gets in these cars. So I'm going to do a little cleaning up and see what we end up with. But really, next time you see me, you'll be sitting right over there watching me floor out. Good plan? Break.
Okay, well, we got some ugliness out. I did, uh, I ended up just cutting this out with the plasma. It was a little gross. So this thing has had uh, rockers put on, inner rockers put on over top of the old rockers. So they did a poor job, so that's unfortunate. But uh, that's all got to kind of come out. I think I might cut this little section out as well, just so we can get the brace hooked up nicely and then I can kind of weld it all back on. The real situation we're running to, and this will be kind of later on, but the back floor is good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. I kind of smacked it around. I mean, it's, it's, it's crusty, but if we wire wheel it and then spray it with some of that uh, rust converter, I think it'll be just fine. I mean, there's no sense putting a whole pan in. That being said, if we start getting into it and there's pinholes or whatever, I do have the pan to put in, but I don't see that being a problem. This brace here is the issue. So again, Got to decide how kind of far I want to go and screw around with it. But, uh, yeah, we'll probably go... Uh, it's actually not that rotten. It's got a little bit there. The back's kind of mangled. The real issue is the frame outrigger is actually rotten on both sides. So I do think I have another one. I got a section of frame behind the garage. So I'll have to go do that. But before we do all those things, the idea is, I mean, the, the car is still very strong. I'm, I've been sitting on this. That's not rocking whatsoever, but kind of bit by bit. And I think what I'll probably, I'll have to look and see what we can do. If I should put the rocker in one section or if I might splice it. I mean, put it in two pieces, grind it and seam seal it. Really, who cares at this point? But I can put the inner rocker in, you know, to about here, let's say. That'll be nice and sturdy. I can then put the floor pan in with the brace, attach all that with a brand new body mount. Because this does have some flex, obviously, to it. Now, the tunnel is strong. The tow boards are strong. There's not a huge worry. But the more you cut out, the more chance you have of twisting. So if I can put that front pan in, get it kind of tacked in and welded, get the brace in, it'll hold everything where it has to be. Then we can slowly but surely work our way back. Again, this section here, you know, I can cut it out put the brace in, attach the brace to my new inner rocker. That'll just be sitting there, and then we can just do this one section all in one piece. Those are my thoughts anyways, but uh, I just did a bunch of plasming. It's kind of smoky and stuff in here, so I'm going to uh, clean up a little bit. You know, I don't think I got any fires. It should be okay. We got the door up. <coughs> it's been like that for like 10 minutes, so it should be kind of cleared out. We'll turn the heat back on because it's chilly now and kind of keep going. Then all we have is the back sections, which would be ugly, but whatever. So... Let that sit for a little, charge the lights, charge the camera, and we'll uh, we'll come back. I gotta clean all this up because it's just ugly, torched out garbage. So we'll have to uh, you know, cut until it's uh, down to the, the good bones we can weld to. So I've jumped ahead just a little bit. Uh, basically just cleaned up everything. Uh, unfortunately, this side, I wish I had my light. The, the rocker, or I put the piece, it's got, uh, I've lost it. It was a little meh, not happy, but all it's gonna be is a straight piece with, a, with an angle. So we can weld that in underneath and really it's gonna be what it's gonna be. So yeah, that's that. Now let's get to the pan. So this is our front pan. We are flipped upside down. And this is something, so this came with the thing. This is obviously a new er, nor has it been outside as much, but look at it. So clearly, right hand under firewall brace, 55 to 57 floor pan, right? Perfect. Now you look at it, there's two holes there, one hole there, they all line up. So on the other on the other side, I I test fit all of that. Um, well I weld it, this side we're just gonna weld it on and be fine. So you'd think both these are gonna be good, right? So we go to line that one up there, and then does it wanna line up here? Like look at all this flop. Take the rotten one. Line that up there. Come on. This right here, even though to the naked eye, those look fine, but this one has a way different slope here, and this one will require a lot of, you know, trimming, cutting, whatever it may be. Like, that's the problem. That's the problem with parts right there. You, like, if I was at the swap meet and the guy was like, oh yeah, 10 bucks each, well, you'd probably, well, I'd take both of them, but you'd probably pick that one, right? Thinking that they look good, but that's the problem. These damn stampings are never the same. A one-piece floor, 
at least they're all wrong, right? <laughs> okay, we'll set the camera up. I'm going to just kind of wire wheel this, clean it up a little. We'll drill some holes uh, on the bottom side and, and plug weld it that way versus the top side just because it's easier. And then we'll be able to put this pan in. Once the pan is in, we'll put a, a little hockey puck, uh, well, it'll be an actual pop, uh, body mount. Put that in, and then obviously the front is going to be where it's going to be. We'll trim a little, and we'll just kind of cut that out, tack it in, hold it. This rocker, unfortunately, it's she's seen better days, but we'll be able to kind of give it a few good welds. Well, it only goes back to here, so <laughs> at the front. I did, oh, I trimmed this piece out here. What did I do with it? Oh, yeah. Simply because to be able to get to this brace, which was all kind of rotten on the end. Uh, yeah, that's probably what it was. Uh, so right, that's where the frame is. So we wouldn't be able to get to it to grind it. So what I'll do is I'll grind this all off or cut it out or whatever I gotta do. Then I'll put the new one on. And I'll probably just tack it right to this piece and then that'll set us up for our front brace, right? Using the old one as a, as a guide. So then when we're done, we'll have load on the floor pan, weld it across would be good, put this in there, that'll be welded to the new inner rocker. Why don't we do that? I have to put that in yet, but let's get the floor pan done, then we'll get to the inner rocker. Okay, well there's our panel, all welded on there, everything lines up. Uh, I just put the inner rocker in, I, I, I sliced it down, um, that's the full length, so it's you know about half. Uh, I ran a little punch on, so it's got a bunch of little spot weldy deals, should be fine. And it's just vice gripped into place, and as you can see there's a spot there where there's no anything. Now what we have to do, we'll fit, I'll show you this real quick, but this will fit in. I think I'm going to use the whole pan just out of laziness, but I'll have to trim out this area here. We have to cut the tunnel and around there, but of course we'll do that with the panel mostly in. Let's see if I can sneak this in here. There you go, it's basically installed. Obviously it won't go down all the way because there's a fold at the front of the panel and there's still floor there. So I'll just kind of gingerly mark it uh, with a with a sharpie and I'll probably take some of the material out just so we're only cutting out a, a little amount when we're slicing it in and yeah I might get the wire wheel in there just kind of clean up a little bit so it can can be welded easily but that's pretty much it pretty simple little deal so I think I'm going to do that um, well before I do that though I will I will weld in the rocker so we'll set the camera up we'll get the rocker placed in so it'll be nice and snug in there and yeah you know, I might drill some holes in this real quick too. Well, from the top and the bottom. It's just easier to do from the top than the bottom.
So just a quick break from the non-stop action, but the pan fits nice and tight around there. Oh, we're a little high here just because it's sitting on top. But you can you know, just kind of push it down. So that's what I'll do. I'll probably push it down, bang it over. We'll plug weld it in there on this nice sturdy strip and give it a couple of welds across the front. Typically a Tri-5 and maybe a lot of things, um, the tow board and then the floorboard, they both have an angle kind of come down and then they're just spot welded across, but we'll just, you know, kind of seam weld it. It'll be just fine. Once we have that in there and it's all locked in, we can then start trimming. I think I might trim right in the middle here, actually. We'll trim that, trim it along there. The back piece will fall out. We can weld it as we go. It should be fine. Now, I should say, this is just the way I'm doing it. You can also just lap weld it, put it on top and weld it. That'll be perfectly strong and be fine and be no issues. But uh, I just like having it butt welded. Uh, oh, it's dust in the camera. Butt welded and then seam sealed and it's like 100% good repair. No one knows. And once it's ground down, if you really want to be fancy, you couldn't even tell it was a panel. We're not going that far because really, who cares? It is what it is. I'm not trying to hide anything. Obviously, putting it on the internet, um, but yeah, so we'll get back to it. That should be pretty good. And then, like I said, we'll have this piece here as our little guide. That's where that's gonna go. Life would be kind of good. So yeah, get that in there. Oh, I do want to put, I, do I have it in there? I don't think I do. I want to put a bushing in there real quick, but this should be fine. Pan's in. Uh, it went a little goofy, you know, I don't know if it's a stamping maybe, but it seems like the pan could have gone that way just a little bit, but like kind of tilted. Yet everything here lined up and the holes where the mounts are lined up. So that's kind of where it was. So what we have to do there is just smack it with a, like a pick style or whatever you want to call it, hammer and just kind of fold that over and it'll be just fine. But now we have some strength back in it. it there's body bushing in there. It's sitting exactly where it wants to sit. We can play with this. Essentially that's going to do some along those lines. Uh, well, like I said, I'll have to clean that all up and get that out and get the other brace in and to it. So that's kind of cool. So I'd like to get that brace, uh, that brace in, yeah, because then the, the top brace goes over top. So I can do that. That'll give it ultimate strength. The front panel will be supported. Everything will be to the rocker and will be golden. Then we can start focusing our way back here with obviously the rear uh, inner rocker and this whole frame ugly section, but that all worked out. But before we do that, I'm gonna charge all the batteries, all the lights, and maybe do a little break myself because this is boring, tedious work, which I do hate. So take some breaks, that way it's harder to get back. Well, there we are. Look at that, nice little pan, pre-rusted. Don't worry, I won't do anything with it. Okay, so took a little break inside and uh, you know, I thought, thought I'd watch a little Mortsky repair, you know, a little Mortsky Monday. Man, the guy, he, a lot of you guys might think we're friends here, but that guy, he just rips, rips me new one for no reason. I just try to be a nice guy. He's just picking on the little guy, you know, and I don't know why he does that, but anyways, I thought you know, what we'd do is uh, maybe do like a little Mortsky minute here and we'll just talk about merch for like 45 minutes because that's basically all he does on his videos. But the mail did just show up. Guess what we got on hand? DD Speed Shop shirts. Got a bunch of them. DD Speed Shop shirts. Got a few of them. DD Speed Shop shirts. Got a few of them as well. So real quick, get those at ddspeedshop.ca. They're not going to last long. Selling his, uh, you know, non-American made products as far as I'm concerned, but 
Hey, whatever. Support whoever you want there, I guess. More importantly, at ddspeedshop.ca, we have these new shirts that are, uh, you know, supporting American workers and stuff like that. Just try and do our part the best way we can so you could uh, go ahead and check those out. You know, he was making fun of my... Uh, my RTV skills and I don't have the right stuff, literally. Well, red high temp hideousness, that's what DD Speed Shop would use. If you wanna check out a real hack, go check out DD Speed Shop. He just did a video here a couple days ago on a, a Facebook Marketplace free engine or engine or something like that. He pulled the stock two barrel intake off of 283 and then got this gray adhesive stuff. And I mean, he didn't just do the china walls, the end walls. He did it all across the middle. And then he didn't like where how it was going, so he just schmooed it everywhere, as he says, schmoo. What in the heck? This is junk. Ugh, honestly, it's like embarrassing. And then he didn't like that, so then he cleaned that up, and then he got the red high temp hideous. Oh man, just complete hack, that guy. Right stuff. Right stuff by Permatex. Best stuff there is, that's what you use and you just put it on the china walls and a little dab in the corner of the gaskets. That's all you need. So hey, at least we're not as big a hacks as uh, discount disappointment speed shop up there in Kanukistan. You know, we're, we're, on a, we're on a fixed budget. That guy pretends to be budget repair, but we know he comes from old money. Anywho, enough, uh, enough uh, you know, giving those guys a hard time. Basically, it's like picking a fight with Motor Trend with his budget. So we're gonna go ahead and put this all together now. I had left the floor pan in, I cleaned up our new brace, and I drilled out some holes, because we're gonna plug weld this in. Now, here's how we're gonna get this in the right spot. Ultimately, it only kinda goes in one area, pretty clear, but what is important is this brace right here. This is the seat brace. This runs across like that, and there's four threaded nut certs. And it's important that they end up, I believe, inside the brace. So obviously if you weld it like that, you're gonna have problems. Now why is this uh, out here? We still have the old back brace in. So if we line up the holes with the back brace that hasn't moved, it then gives us an idea of where the front brace has to go. Now, Again, this has some wiggle room. I'm sure there's some factory stuff that people might be obsessed with from a measurement. We're not worried about that. This brace does not, this brace does not go to any uh, mount on the car itself. It literally is just a floor brace. And the reason being, obviously, we have some flex there. So it just has to go from this-ish section of the floor to the inner rocker and obviously here as well and then when we put the other piece of the floor in there as well and that's how you're going to get your sturdiness so we'll get that in so it's kind of close okay we'll then put this back together so we're somewhat lined up now again this piece actually has to go between the brace and the floor so it's not like it's a hundred percent here but just make sure we're kind of somewhat lined up close your eyes whoops that was terrible wow okay so now that's kind of held in i'll go ahead and do one more at the front here So that brace isn't going anywhere, and we'll still be able to sneak that in where we want it to be before we plug weld it all together. Now I'm not going to do that yet because we still got to work in this area, so there's no point in doing that. But we can just kind of make sure this is in there. Hey Mortsky? Okay, that ain't going nowhere. What do I do now? I guess I'll probably work back here. We'll cut out this remaining floor bit. I wonder how I should do that. It's actually not that bad. The brace is okay. So we're going to end up just kind of welding into the brace. What are we going to do? 
I'm just gonna start cutting. I'm gonna cut this section of the floor out. We'll get the brace exposed at least. And we see how much of it we're gonna replace. Cause I'd like to get the brace in, probably change the actual frame brace. Unfortunately, that's gonna be ugly. And uh, kind of keep going from there. We do have to see, well, the rocker might not be too bad. We'll get it up in the air. We'll see what the look at the rocker is too, but we'll get this trimmed out and kind of keep going there. So stay tuned for all sorts of fun stuff. Oh, also uh, our dogs are better than stupid Duff. Well, things got out of hand as per usual. So I cut a little bit more than I wanted, but this is the frame brace. So that was right there and it actually fell apart. So what happens is this is the bottom side. It sits like that. And of course all the rocks and junk sit in it, much like everything else in this freaking car, all cars I should say, and they rot out. So that's fine. Now I cut a little bit further than I wanted. But we kept the, is that the piece. We kept the piece, so we can weld that back in. Uh, what we're going to do now is attempt to trim that floor brace to replace uh, this floor brace or whatever it was. Uh, clean up the frame. Obviously, I have to go get another floor brace off another frame I have, and. The rocker here, uh, looking back, it's actually, <laughs> these damn rockers, they're solid to about here, and then in the back section it needs repair. So I'm just gonna scab another piece in there, weld it, and it'll be just fine. No one will know difference. The rocker's still nice, everything's happy. So that is gonna be the upcoming plan in a rocker in. I might just go do that on my own real quick. You already seen that. So in a rocker in, then, we can put the new brace where we want it at the same time as putting the floor brace in. So everything lines up all tacked together. Then we can put in our seat brace and then weld the whole thing. And then essentially we'll have our structure like the skeleton Then we just got to skin it in a non creepy saw way. You know what I mean? But it shouldn't be too bad. because we have that piece and I have that piece somewhere. I still have the, the junk on it. That'll be there. So really it's just a flat piece now. It has this little kind of kink in it, but uh, I'm not too worried about it. Over, zing, 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 zing. We're done. Obviously a new piece will have to be spot welded and all that or plug welded to the, the new brace, but there you go. So if you're ever worried about this stuff, don't be, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm making it up as I'm going. Piece at a time, and as long as it all kind of works and the car doesn't fold on itself, if the car does fold on itself, just get a come along or a floor jack or whatever and put it back into place and, and kind of keep on keeping on. Even though something is rusty, there is still an unbelievable amount of strength in rusty metal. So don't worry, things just going to kink in half. I think you're fine. Okay, let's get after it. I think I got a frame rail outside. I'm going to go take a look and see if I can get another brace. Okay, so I pulled in a couple of, well, piece of frame rail. Um, this is the original frame rails off my 55, my Nomad. Uh, first block, the black one. Um, I 
We didn't use this frame because, I, think, I don't know if it was rotten in the back, but for sure the front had a clip put on it. It was done very poorly. It was like a 70s Nova or something like that, or a sort of Camaro front clip, and it was done bad, so I just, whatever. I kept the frame for a couple of reasons. On the driver's side, on the top section, the serial number is stamped in it. I was always going to just keep it and turn it into a keychain or something like that. But uh, And obviously, I didn't know that in a year or two from now, I'd be needing this in good shape. So I'll zip that off and get her ready to go over here. Uh, we cleaned up the thing. I drilled a little hole. There was a little weep hole, but I just drilled it up one size bigger. Uh, we got the rocker in, and this is the section that we're going to use to essentially turn into an end cap. So you can see it's kind of cut right at that circle, so I'll be right there. So we'll slice it there just to get a manageable piece, and then be able to join it. If I join it on top of the frame, I can weld it on the inside. No one will ever see it. I can kind of get the end, you know, dress the ends if I want with my uh, little belt sander. I did spray a bunch of lubricant in there for the other captured nut, which is all the way there. I mean, I guess I could go further, but why? It's fine. The floor's good. The nut looks good. Actually, the bolt looks in good shape. I bet it'll come out. So I'll spray a little oil on it. And then we can clean this piece up and, and essentially get it set in just like this one. Once that's set in, uh, yeah, we should, well, I got well, the for the bracket and all that on so we'll uh i'll get a few pieces i'll get this chopped up i'll get that piece off the frame and i'll come back and i'll start kind of talking my way through it because at the end of the day all these things have to line up obviously uh that hole has to line up with the hole in the bushing for our body to be aligned this looks like it's had a rough go get it all tacked into place and we can finish weld it so we've got a lot of stuff. This is the piece I, I cut and kind of made fit. So as you see, that should pretty well work. Might need a little massaging, but good enough to weld in. We can then, unfortunately, I don't have the proper bushing. This is just more of a spacer. I'm supposed to get it today, but of course, the mail. So we'll be end up putting that under there and kind of just line it up. And it looks, it should be pretty close. So that'll be fine. Um, and then once we get those in, we can put the seat brace in and kind of weld it all together. So let's, uh, what do you say we get started real quick here? I'm going to call that good. The reason is it's a little tight, but with the bushing being brand new, she's got a lot of uh, compression to go against her. Where's my helmet? Here it is. Okay, let's burn this in real quick. Okay, body pushing in, we get our mount in, still kind of see fine, so it's centered up, it's the only thing I don't like is this is hard now, center, okay that should be good, now I'm just going to give it one quick tack weld, ooh I missed. Now the nice part about this, it doesn't have to be perfect at this point because we're going to make this section. This is what we cut out. That'll fit right back in spot. So we're going to want to plug weld that in. We're going to run a weld across the bottom. Make sure it's nice and snug. I'll give the sides to the inner rocker a good weld. Once that's done, then we can kind of hammer this. The brace is not folded exactly like the old one so it needs a little in on this side and out on that side but uh well, whatever repop stuff do what we can so we'll get that all dialed together real quick
so the braces are all in um we're gonna go ahead and put the seat brace in now i would recommend if you're gonna uh do this and you're gonna be factory stuff now would be a good time maybe just buzz the the bracket in real quick we have that side in tack this one in and just make sure the seat still fits you know or do some measurements what i'm gonna do is not that and here's the reason why when a tri-5 the seat is in the factory location it doesn't go far enough back for me to drive them comfortably um so what i'm going to end up doing is just welding this in i'm going to build some plates which will essentially just be bolt into here and then go back i think it's either two or four inches uh and they'll just push the seat back the problem is on a wagon when you do that when the seat's all the way back you won't be able to fold the seat forward so there is some give and take to that but because i'm doing that anyways i'm going to make a bracket to fit it's pretty much irrelevant as long as it's close obviously front to back they're fine side to side they may be a little bit out now that being said i also think on the whole of the seat they're fairly large with a washer to hold it but whatever i i am putting in the basically the same spot it came out um we have all the old pieces this one oh this one right here so essentially when i cut it i cut where the floor got cut out it just barely kissed the edge of the I'm going to reuse this piece. Barely kiss the edge of that brace. So that's where it is. So we put it up there. You square up the back to where you're happy with it. It's going to kind of be what it's going to be. So if you really care, double check. If you're a body man doing it, sorry I'm doing it this way. But it's the way she's going. All right, well, um, I turned the camera off there. A friend stopped by, but we got our little front piece in. I know it looks a little patchy, but I see this little spot. So that's obviously a seam. You weld it, you grind it down. That's what everything will look like with a pile of welding and grinding. Anyways, what we're going to do now is take this little piece of sheet metal and kind of start forcing it around. It's going to be a little funny. Uh, well, maybe not too bad. I guess it only has to fold over and then down. So I'll probably just start tacking it in and folding it over and doing a bunch of things. May end up with a kink in it. And if it does, we'll just zip cut it and kind of keep folding old bad Chad style. Because it's a floor pan and shrinking and stretching a little section of floor that's gonna be under the seat with carpet on it that no one's ever gonna see and be undercoat from the backside just seems like a waste of time to me. So yeah, I'd like to get that taken care of. And then really, I don't know. I guess we can start kind of, well, we'll clean everything out. We'll wire wheel this, make sure it's good. And if it is, then we'll start welding. Man, I didn't want to start doing the floors and now I don't want to finish them because that is boring. But let's get after it.
Well, a pile of work later, and we have a slightly better floor pan. So I wire wheeled the front, it looks okay. I did wire wheel the back. There was no real issues, there's just one little kind of corrosion spot there. But what that is, is that's right over where that, that brace runs. So obviously something's got between, so I'll just grind that. I'm pretty sure I'll just weld it and then just you know grind it off. Uh, these patches, I mean, it looks a little, a little hokey, but what are you going to do? It's kind of the way it went. Uh, once it's welded and then ground down, it won't be as noticeable. Bit of a funny, this right here didn't go how I wanted, but what are you going to do? It, it is it is what it is. I got to weld this all from underneath, and I still got to make a patch panel in there or something. But I think I'm going to do tonight, crank up the tunes, and just weld and weld and weld and weld and get as much as I can. I don't know what wire I got in the machine or welding gas. I have to do some stopping and screwing around with that. But I'd like to get this taken care of. This right here is the peak set the car on fire be aware of. Now, here we have no issues, stuff like that. All around here, this has undercoating under it. That is gonna start fire. There is no bones about it. It'll probably burn out and do whatever, but you have to be aware of it. It's gonna smoke, it's gonna be terrible. It's gonna be all those things. So just be aware of that, you know? This line right here is gonna be the problem. This stuff, eh, maybe not so much in there because I think it cleaned up under there. Around there is fine, here is fine. Bear in mind, safety, maybe not first, but burning your garage down and your prized, overpriced Nomad, that's not on the list tonight. So we have fire extinguisher all ready to go, but uh, hopefully we don't need it. I'm gonna set the camera up, I'm gonna plug it in because it's just gonna be, man, I am dirty. The mask helps, but it still makes me look dirty. Uh, yeah, we're gonna start, start, I almost dropped an F-bomb. We're gonna start fricking welding. You can tell I'm excited about it, but uh, yeah, let's go. Look at all the old Nomad pans. Those are like NOS original. They're probably worth big bucks, right? Scrapper's gonna get it. So, don't, don't look there. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with it. It's all kind of ground down. Why don't you put a seam sealer and some black paint on this. It'll be just like factory. Yeah, it's probably been about half hour, 45 minutes since I've been since I was grinding and all that sort of stuff. I just kind of cleaned up, pissed around, talked to buddy on the phone, you know, so everything's cooled off. There's no issues charging all the batteries up. It's probably 11 o'clock at night. I was gonna keep going, but I was like, nah, it's not worth it. I'll get home tomorrow and right after work and I'll start welding all that side in. I gotta get more welding wire anyways. I don't know if I even have enough and uh, have to rob the other machine. It's just not worth it. So I'll get some tomorrow. We'll get that side all dialed. I don't know if I have any seam sealer. I gotta put that on the list as well. We should be able to seam seal this thing and paint it tomorrow. Well, I still gotta do the back, I guess, eh? We'll see, we'll get it all welded for sure tomorrow and we'll start welding underneath and doing all that. And then I don't know if I'll finish all the floors, 100% that little back section might have to wait a little bit. 
that's a very boring and tedious job and it just sucks the life out of you. When you start hating it, you're gonna start doing a worse job. And this car, it, it, it deserves, it deserves good work. And uh, I do feel as though I'm doing that. I'm sure some of you guys maybe in the comments don't necessarily agree, but I think it's uh, being refurbished. That being said, the brakes showed up, the drop spindle showed up. What else did I get? I think that's all I got for it. I have to order a carpet kit for it anyways. So you know what? We might get on some mechanical. We might be back on that 57. I'm not really too sure, but we'll finish this up tomorrow while I get to think about it. And uh, screw you, Mortsky. New day. Got a new tank of gas. Brand new spool of welding wire. I just put in a root beer hard candy to suck on. And I'm gonna give you guys the privilege of what, of watching me weld up this fine floor pan. So we got that side mostly, well, done enough. We'll do this side tonight, which will be probably in an hour or so, just welding and grinding, which is kind of lame, but, oh, I should probably fix this too while we're at it. Anyways, we'll get on that. I might even paint it black tonight. We'll see how far I get, but uh, just go from work. Why is this stiff? Hmm. Anyways, enjoy the, uh, Excitement. Sorry.
So I jumped ahead a little bit. When you guys went for that ride out of the car on the camera, it actually smashed the microphone and I had to glue it to the, the thing there. So uh, while that was drying, I carried on. I ground everything down. I don't think that was on video. I ground it all down and then I coated everything um, with this rust converting stuff. So it's a brush on deal. Um, the back pan I put on real thick, so it's still kind of taking its time. It did say multiple uh, thin coats. So that one, I literally dumped it and spread it around. It'll dry by tomorrow. And I just kind of rubbed it over uh, the brand new pans I put in, because they had that surface rust to it. And then on the other side, oh, let's stay on there. I, uh, we can walk around and show it, not just across the way. You know, I did it first and it dried kind of quick-ish to the touch. You're not, you're not gonna show? It, this does show oh. all of it. So I got it all in there and I mean, I've installed my fair share of floor pans. This may not be the prettiest. You can see a couple of seams and it's kind of bent and all up. And at the end of the day, it's a lot of it's the original. But a little bit of a break there, eh? <coughs> anyway, like I was saying, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I've had enough garage time for the day. But I mean, an old floor pan's beat up and stuff anyways. And uh, let's be honest, it, it is what it is. So it looks fine. I put in, like I said, those brand new ones. No one's ever asked to see my floor pan. So this will be good. It's more than, it's, it's adequate, strong, all those things. I do still have some welding to do underneath and in the corner, so I didn't do that. But uh, I'm not gonna lie, I've had enough of the inside of this car for a little bit. So we're gonna let that stuff dry overnight and I'll just give it a quick coat of paint just so it's kind of whatever. I'll probably come in and seam seal it. I might not even do all these areas. It, it looked pretty good. And I mean, this thing's gonna have a pretty uh, privileged life, I think, going forward. So there's no real worries about that. So floor pans in, uh, a lot of work. I know a lot of you guys had a lot of ideas about buy a full pan and cut it and do all these things. And none of you were wrong, but these pans were extremely cheap, free. Um, and ultimately in my mind, I wanted to keep as much original metal on this car as I can. It, you know, it's only original once. I know the car's not original, original, but it's the most original car I've ever owned. And uh, yeah, I don't know, keeping the tunnel and all that in there seems good. Like I said, realistically, the only pan I had to buy was this one right here and a couple little braces. <clears throat> so to buy a thousand dollar plus pan and then only use these little sections just didn't make sense. It took me two long days and then tonight after work. So I don't know. A little bit of extra time, but not, not terrible. And I'm happy with it. So that's really in this video. That being said, we have to revert around. We hate Mortsky. But we put those shirts out. And uh, so we're filming this on Tuesday. The shirts came out on Tuesday. So this video will probably be out on Thursday, I'm hoping. I'm almost up to date, which is I got to get back to work. I'm falling behind. But we sold a pile of shirts. And I got to say, me and Danny appreciate the hell out of it. We took a, we took a gamble. People are asking about shirts. And uh, we gambled savings to, to buy them up front and deal with some stuff in the States and all that. And we appreciate the hell out of you guys. Because it's it blows my mind that at the end of the day, someone wants to wear one of our cars as a shirt, which is just absolutely fantastic. So thank you guys so much. We are absolutely making mistakes along the way. We're currently only doing it in the US. I know there's people in Europe and Australia and, and, and Canada, for crying out loud, that uh, aren't exactly happy that we can't get them shirts. And you know what? We're hearing you. We're figuring it out. But the current way we're doing it, the cost of shipping just doesn't make sense. And I can't justify selling someone a $65 shirt. I, I just, that's ridiculous. And not like we're putting 65 bucks in our pocket. That's just going out to expenses. So. I'm not gonna sit here and defend it too bad. We're doing the best we can. Ultimately, it's a goofy YouTube show. Uh, so <laughs> keep in mind that that's what you're dealing with if you can't get the shirt the exact way you want. But thank you so much for watching and subscribing and supporting us along the way. And uh, I wanna get back on the 57 because this ratty Tri-5 Chevy just isn't doing it for me anymore. You know what I mean? Just comment below, leave me an email or a message and all that stuff. Danny's the one responding most of it, but uh, she's doing a pretty good job at it. And we'll see you on the next video, which will actually probably be in the past, but that 57 two-door hardtop, it's pretty badass. And I wanna get back to it. See you next time. Hit turn it off. Don't break the microphone. Is it recording?
<laughs> is the sound on? I hope so. It's glued on. <laughs>